Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm back with a new video and this time is my April 2021 bullet journal setup. This month I decided to go for a picnic theme channeling spring vibes into my bujo. I thought this was perfect since the weather is getting nicer, not too cold, not too hot, just maybe a little bit windy. I'm starting right away with a cover page and immediately with a picnic theme I immediately thought of Amanda Raj Lee July 2020 bullet journal setup and while I didn't recreate the whole thing, this cover page is 100% inspired by her creation. She has a red gingham picnic blanket laid at the bottom of the spread with different picnic items scattered around which is what I'm going for but I'm switching up some elements. Amanda used only one accent color which was red and recently I decided that for my future setups I'm going to choose colors that I haven't been using as often and based on my previous ones I noticed that orange is a color that I last used on May of last year. I included a dark blue shade as well into the color palette because this is a color combination that I really like and I think they really go well together. And as you can see, that's the color I use for my picnic blanket. I also changed the blanket pattern just to add something different to my cover page and not having it look too similar to the original. I first finished drawing all the picnic items I wanted to have here, so tracing the blanket pattern was easier. And then I added some grass around it and some falling leaves. For the title, I'm using my clear alphabet stamps with the uppercase letters and since I don't have an orange ink pad, I use this little trick where you swatch your marker on a plastic bag and pick up the ink as you normally would. It didn't work as nicely as I expected when I did it with the whole board on the acrylic block, so I redid it one by one after. I also stamped a mini calendar right below, and just so you know, I know this is the wrong calendar for April. I realized later on, and I did fix it, but you'll see how at the end on the final flip through. So then I proceeded to add um, color to certain areas to the picnic items, but leaving them mostly uncolored. Next thing I did was to add these pieces of paper from my book page to fill in other areas as well. And I'm not sure why I thought of doing this, but it's something I came up with when sketching the next spreads, which is my monthly overview. For this one again, I'm changing things up and I'm still using the same sections, but I'm playing around with the layout. I mostly go for a two page B calendar box and whatever space I'm left with, I use it for notes and weekly tasks. This time I decided to assign just one page for my monthly log and in the other page, I'll put my other two sections and play around with the extra space. So, on the left page we have the calendar and I highlighted the date sections where the number of the days go and I happen to have a stencil with a wavy pattern on one of its edges and I thought it would go very well with the picnic concept. It ended up looking like curtains but I still liked it. Since there is not much space left for other things, I think that this was a nice addition for the spread. To keep the setup cohesive, I needed to repeat elements I used before, so we have the falling leaves, the grass at the bottom, and the stamped letters for the days of the week where I only use the first letter of each day. I don't think I've mentioned this, but the markers I'm using for the setup are two Crayola Super Tips for the darker shades, and two Miniso markers which are my liner dupes. And, as I was about to fill in the number of the days, I realized I've made a mistake in my cover page with the mini calendar and I had to go back to my future log to verify where April started. Since that shade of blue in the background is too dark, I use a white gel pen to write down the numbers and sometimes it's a little difficult to write on top of Crayola Super Tips, but there's no denying that this type of combination with the dark color and the white on top looks really pretty. The last thing I did here was to fill in the extra boxes at the beginning and at the end of the month um, with pieces from the book pages and then we'll go ahead with the other sections on the right. I divided the upper middle portion of the page in half, so we have the same space for both notes and weekly tasks. 
and I used to have the last one as a checklist, but this month I'll just have a list with bullet points and see how it works out. Honestly, this might be a little too much space for this, but I've been craving some change, and I think this affected this particular setup, especially because it kind of shows in how I try switching things up for all of my spreads, as you will see later on. Okay, so now we're about to start with the element that inspired me to use those book pages. As I was sketching this spread, I thought that a picnic table would fit really nicely there at the bottom, and I sort of drew it from a looking up on the side perspective, so you're seeing both seats left and right. I didn't want to add brown into my color palette, but at the same time, if I color the picnic table orange, it will kind of look weird. And I don't know, all of a sudden uh, my brain made a decision that filling it with book pages would look really pretty and so I did. After making that decision, I had to see how I could incorporate that into my other spreads to keep it cohesive, but it really wasn't that hard and I'm so happy with the results. I also had to prepare beforehand so this process wouldn't take too long, so I roughly measured the areas I had to cover and drew them in a piece of paper so when I started the setup, I only had to cut them and make them fit. This table was the most complex object to get right since I did it part by part instead of the whole thing. So this is my little Frankenstein picnic table and I think it looks so cute. This might be my favorite spread to look at ever. I continued by adding the falling leaves and the grass and I wanted the table to stand out some more so I grabbed my gel pen and my ruler and started overlining each piece. And lastly, I had to add these orange doilies into my setup, no matter how. I had these for ages and never got around to using them, and now with a the picnic theme, I had to. So I just put a piece wherever I had space left. And for the following spreads, we'll be working on my trackers. You normally have the habit trackers and emo tracker, but ever since February, I titled them as trackers and moods. That's because not all of what I keep track of are habits, so generalizing it sounded better for me, and the moods just became moods because I changed the other one. As you can see, I went for a horizontal layout so my trackers occupy the upper portion of both pages, and I used my beloved clear calendar stamps, and this time I did use the right one. For each tracker, I created the same style of header with the blue background and wavy pattern at the bottom. And I needed to fit 9 trackers so this doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. And I also stamped one of the calendars one row off, so not my best work. But I made up my mind that it was too much trouble to fix that one, so I just told myself to let it be. Also, the title looks a little bit wonky here, but in person it doesn't look that bad, so it's okay. It's crazy to think that this spread used to take up most of the time spent for my monthly setups, but now with the stamps has become the quickest. This part is already finished, so now let's get into the mood tracker. To be honest, I wasn't feeling very creative for this one, as in it doesn't involve any type of doodles. Instead, I thought of using different gingham patterns to incorporate the picnic concept since I didn't have any type of picnic items here. So what I came up with was to have all of these little squares be blank picnic blankets. Of course, right now that's not very obvious, but hopefully at the end of the month the concept gets across. And now we're in for the last spread for this video, and no, it's not the first weekly spread, this is actually my brand on page. I want to create another video of me setting up all of my weeklies for April, but since I need to plan them a little bit differently this time, I decided to skip that one for my main setup. So brand on pages, I've been using them consistently for a while now, and I know what type of information gets written down here, so this month I'm splitting it into two main categories. One for lists, and the other one is for projects and ideas. I will assign one page for each of those, and of course, you want to have as much blank space as possible so you don't run out, but I still like to spice up all of my spreads, 
So to balance things out, I'm again using the main idea from the cover page with a picnic blanket at the bottom. And just like Amanda in her setup, I'm changing up the picnic items just to have some variety. And this just takes up a little bit over a quarter of the space available so I can manage with that. I'm creating the headers for each category and hopefully this works out. As I mentioned before, I changed things up for all of my spreads this month, so I'm excited to see how I do with that. This one and the trackers are not as major as my monthly overview, but if it goes smoothly, I'll try to have something different every other month so I don't get that feeling of having too many limitations of what I can do for my Pujo spreads. I've always had minor tweaks thrown in there for my previous setups, but for 2021, I really want to experiment more, especially with layouts. I feel like I always stick to the same things over and over again, and I think change can bring something good. I'm adding a doily here in the upper corner as the last detail for this thread, so now we'll have the final flip through. I hope you enjoyed today's video, if so, please leave a like or a comment down below. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you everyone for watching, until the next video.